If you don't correct the past and have knowledge of the past, you will not have the necessary skill how to deal with the present. But have you not noticed the past is the present? That's right. That's right. People have asked, how can we get rid of racism? Well, let me pose a question to the world. Have you ever asked yourself, how did racism last so long? How did racism can't become so strong? How did racism become so believable? How did racism become so convincing that people were and still are willing to die to keep it? How did racism become so prevalent? What was used to keep it here? How did it spread so rampant? How was it presented to be so convincing? Viewers, the answer to all those questions come under one heading, religion. Religion has been the institution of racism for years. What do you mean? Whether you're black, white, brown, yellow, or red, every color on the spectrum wants to be and has some form of religious belief. The Bible is used right, and the Bible is used wrong. This book of scripture, which is the words of Almighty God, mm -hmm. but even though it's the words of God, the words of God can be placed in the hands of Satan. What then notwithstanding? And when it's placed in the hands of Satan, the words of God become diluted and misrepresented. In other words, this. You can take a clip, a reporter can interview a person who's not racist, and then that uh, reporter can edit the interview. And when he or she done editing the interview, can make the one that's being interviewed look like they're saying something they ain't never said. It's a matter of taking out, moving words around, editing and making the good appear evil and make the evil appear good. Do you understand? That's what evil, seducing, ungodly, unrighteous men done. Let me just give you two scriptural examples. Give me the book of Genesis. When uh, the son of Jacob saw his father. Let's get that quickly. And and another scripture come to mind. Jacob, uh, you had Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And uh, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, beg your pardon, the sons of Noah. Not the sons of Jacob, the sons of Noah. Ham, Shem, and Japheth. In the book of Genesis. This scripture right here, religion and scholar. And in the New Testament, I want obey your masters. I want these two scriptures right. that religion have used for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years to promote racism. Right. Listen. In the book of Genesis chapter 9 and at verse 19. Yes. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. These are the three sons of Noah, and by them the whole earth was populated. And Noah began to be an husband man, and he planted a vineyard. Yes. And he drank of the wine and was drunken. Uh -huh. And he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham the father of Cain and saw the Ham the father of Cain and saw his father. And told his two brethren without. Yes. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders. Uh -huh. And went backward and covered the nakedness of their father, and their faces were backward. Then what? And they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah woke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. He realized what his youngest son done to him. Genesis 9, we're at verse 25. Listen good. And he said, Cursed be Canaan. Noah, cursed 
his son. He said, Cuss be Canaan. A servant, a of, servant servants. of servants. Shall he be shall unto his brethren. Be unto your brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. And Canaan shall be his servant. And God shall enlarge Japheth. And he will dwell in the tents of Shem. And, and Canaan shall be his servant. And, and Noah lived after the flood 350 years. It is this scripture that religion have used for years, especially white ministers, whether they were Pentecostal, apostolic, non-denominational, Catholic, Protestant, Episcopalian, and say it is God will, and it was God will, for all black people to be less than nothing and to be brutalized by white folk because God prophesied it through Noah. No, he did not. No. No, he did not. No. And then they take the scripture in the New Testament where it says, Obey your master. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6, we're at verse 1. Quickly, son. Like, let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor. Let that, as many masters that are under the worthy, yoke. Worthy of all honor. Worthy of all honor. That the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. What is it? And they that have believing masters. They that have, notice the language of the book. They that have believing masters. Let them not despise them. Don't despise them. Because they are brethren. They are brothers. But rather do them service. And what? Because they are faithful and beloved. Now, that wasn't talking about do them service the way the slave master was no. doing service. No. The slave master raped your grandmother, had your grandmother, mother, daughters, granddaughters pregnant at the same time. That's right. That's right. Many times he would have sex with the man's wife while the man was there. Force him to watch it. That's right. That's right. Use fear, scare tactics to intimidate. That's right. So, what happened? Here we quickly. Drop what you're doing. Go in the corner and bring me one of those pictures that we had earlier. Quickly, please. I want to deal with the whole method. Just one picture. They use the Bible and lie on the Bible and say, God, God, Jesus, the Christ, wants you to be ignorant. God made you to be less than us. God made you to serve us. Now, if this is constantly being told to people for years, where they live, just said it there, for years in a church and you're constantly told this all your life, what happened? You become mentally and emotionally programmed. So now, in religion, they put this in your church and said, this is your savior. That's right. They say, this is God. That's right. And you're supposed to bow to your slave master because your slave master represents God. So they hold this picture. They know it's a lie, but the objective is make God white, make the slave master white, and when you bow to your slave master or bow to white folk, it took the fight out of you, out of you because you thought you was doing God's will. That's right. That's right. Exhort Churches service. have done this. That's right. That's why you see it all on the stained glass. All pictures in your Bible, everywhere. And the churches are afraid to speak out against this poison. Racism has used religion like a surfer, used water on a surfboard. And they've took it from religion to religion, to church, to church, to church, to church, to church. You would find many, many, many years ago, that if a white group went inside of any church, 
And if that church had a balcony, you were sent to the balcony. In church, a black man couldn't use the same bathroom. In church, a black man couldn't sit at the same table. But yet, they say they're Christians. Let us remember the Ku Klux Klan also declared themselves to be Christians. That's right. That's right. Didn't they? That's right. So Trump stands in front of a church. Amen. Hold a Bible he don't believe in. Right. And then people feel as though he done something big or something great. They said this was a great moment <laughs> in history. The Amen. president held the Bible. Amen. That don't mean nothing. That's right. Do you know even the devil quote the Bible? That's right. Give me the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 4. Chapter 4. I'm going to start at verse 1. Trump hold the Bible as if he done something big. The Ku Klux Klan been holding the Bible for years. The Ku Klux Klan will burn a cross. Bigots and those that were racist held Bibles for years. Holding the Bible don't mean nothing. Believing what's in there and practicing what's in there, then you will get some credit. Holding it don't mean nothing. nothing. An atheist can hold the Bible. Listen. Matthew chapter 4, we'll start at verse 1. Follow me. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Jesus was led up by the Spirit to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days, When he days fasted 40, 40 days, nights, the devil came to him. And when the tempter came to the him. The devil came to him. He said, if thou be the Son of if God. thou be the Son of God. Commanded these stones to be made these bread. stones to be turned to bread. But he answered and said, it is written. Jesus responded to Satan and said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. Thou man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city. Then the devil took Jesus up to the holy city. And setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. And what did the devil say? And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God. If you be the Son of God. Cast thyself down. And. For it is written. Here is the devil now quoting the Bible to Jesus. That's right. Satan. That's right. Says to it Jesus. It Satan is written. says to Jesus. And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God. It's written. It is written. It's written. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. So, Trump standing holding the Bible was a dumb moment. Woe well, unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Yeah, it was a dumb moment. That's right. It was a moment of buffoonery. <laughs> it was a moment of hypocrisy. That's right. It was a moment where God was not represented at all. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? That's right. Read what you have, sir. Matthew 23, and I'm at verse 14. Says what? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites. What are they? Hypocrites. Hypocrites. For ye devour widows' houses. Ye devour widows' houses. And for a pretense. And for pretending, for pretending, for pretending, you're pretending. What do they do? Make long prayer. Amen. So Trump held the Bible. Yeah. Didn't know what to do with it. That's right. That I do That's right. That's right. Didn't know what to do with it. That's right. Read it. Read it. Understand it. Right. And obey it. Amen. If you're not going to respect and obey it, yeah. then what good is trying to advertise it? That's right. To try to make people believe that you are a believer. Listen, you have believers and you have disciples. That's right. A believer and a disciple are two different things. Okay. You can believe something, but you're not a disciple. What do you mean? You can believe what the Bible says, but you're not a follower of it. You don't practice it. You believe it by knowing it's true, but you're not ready to submit yourself and obey it and govern your life according. For I say unto you. Listen. Back in Matthew 5 and verse 20. 
I say unto you that except your righteousness. Glory to God. Amen. Except your right deeds be above. Shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. So you churches. You churches. I have said before and I say again. Take this racist image out of your church. That's right. Take that racist image out of your church. They took the counterfeit of his vices from far. They took the counterfeit of his vices from far. Of his vices from far. And made an express image of a king. They made an express image of a king. Whom they honored. Who they honored. To the end that by this their forwardness they might flatter him that was absent. You think God is flattered? You trying to make him white? Others trying to make him black? Others trying to make him brown? Leave color out of God. That's right. When it come to God, don't try to add color to him. That's right. The Bible says in John 4, 24, God is a spirit. What kind of spirit? Holy spirit, sanctified, righteous spirit. That's right. He's a God that whites can bow to, blacks can bow to, brown can bow to. God don't look at the color of your skin. One thing I say about the death angel, he's not a racist. No. Is he? No, no. Oh, that's, I, I, I keep telling the folk, there's not a racist death angel that ever exists, nor is the grave prejudice. That's right. Nor when a corpse die, is there racist worms. Amen. Those worms cover that body of the black, brown, and red and consume you over a long period of time and eat the flesh off your bones. That's right. All right, son, let's go back to where we were. Back in Matthew 5 and verse 20. Follow me. For I say unto you that accept your righteousness. So the unrighteous act of prejudice and racism got on the backs of religion and many bigots. I can't say all white people, that's why I have to say bigots. Only those that are racist bigots have taught people of color for years that you have less than, you are less than. At one time, even in America, that was, there was a law that forbid people of color to learn how to read. That's right. That was law in America. That's right that it was wrong, illegal. <laughs> it was, think of it. Here in America, there was a time that it was illegal for people of color to read. Hello. That goes to show you how bigots was afraid of you understanding. Bigots did not want you to comprehend. You know how to deal with the matter when you understand the situation better. Yeah. You know how to handle that matter. You know how to handle that person. You know how to go about fulfilling that deed. 